Hello students and welcome you all again to this video lecture series on chapter mechanical testing of metals up till now in this chapter we have seen uh, the tensile testing then we have seen the impact test under that we have seen two types of impact test char p and iso impact test then we have seen the hardness testing under that we have seen again the three types of hardness testing that is brinell hardness testing rockwell hardness testing and weakers hardness testing after that uh, the last few test in that destructive testing we are going to see in this week in that first that is a fatigue test and after that second video will be there which is on the creep test after that destructive testing will be covered and after these two videos we will start the non destructive testing methods so for today's lecture we will see now the fatigue test so what is a fatigue in the material science the fatigue is the weakening of a material caused by the cyclic loading that results in progressive and localized structural damage and growth of the cracks so now the fatigue failure is nothing but the failure of the material due to application of cyclic load and which progressively causes the damage or growth of the crack in the specimen now whenever you will consider one example small example of a metallic wire so if you want to break that metallic wire what you will do you will not apply the tensile load or any compressive load on that wire you just bend and unbend that wire that is nothing but you are applying cyclic load continuously compression and tensile load on that wire so that it will break immediately or within short effort very short effort so that is nothing but a fatigue load or a cyclic load that you are applying due to that the failure of the material will occur that is called as a fatigue failure now for that purpose you are applying continuously cyclic load here one cycle for that load is shown you are applying the tensile load as well as compression load in cyclic manner similar cycles will be further there on that span so to with the help of this fatigue test actually we are finding uh, the endurance limit below which uh, the number of cycles or number of the cyclic load that the material can handle will be more so for finding that endurance limit or uh, uh, we need to carry out this fatigue test so already we have seen fatigue is due to the repeated loading and unloading when the material is subjected to force acting in different direction at different times it can cause cracking in time uh, this causes the material to fail at the load that is much less than its tensile strength this is the fatigue failure the vibration for the example is a serious cause of this fatigue failure yes vibration is also an major cause of that fatigue failure in day to day application if you consider the application of any kind of motor and at the end of that motor one application will be connected through the shaft so whenever there will be misalignment in that shaft and motor bearing so there will be vibrations created and due to these vibrations cyclic loads will be there on that shaft and due to that there will be fatigue failure of that shaft so the vibration is a major cause of that fatigue failure so fatigue can be prevented with the good design practice so that Uh, a smooth surface finish reduces the chance of surface cracking so whatever the previously surface defects are there at that surface def defect due to vibration and due to misalignment and due to other factors and due to cyclic load fatigue failure will occur so if there is a smooth surface finish and uh, good or less cracks over the surface then there is a less chance of a surface cracking due to fatigue sharp corners should be avoided to avoid the fatigue failure corrosion should be avoided at this uh, can cause the fatigue cracks also so corrosion should be avoided so these things you can do for the avoiding fatigue failure but in fatigue test uh, what actually we are doing 
so rr murray's test is used for carrying out this fatigue test so what he has done he has used the one shaft or one specimen mounted in between the two bearings uh, in this diagram we can actually see so one specimen is there exactly at the center which is mounted in between the two bearings those bearings we have called it as a load bearings because we are applying some amount of load w over these two bearings so that on each bearing on each load bearing there will be w by 2 load acting in downward direction now for initial stage so uh, after these load bearings there are two main bearings in which uh, those central shaft will be mounted main bearing after main bearing there is a connection of that shaft from that main bearing to the motor with the help of flexible coupling so that whenever motor will rotate that rotations will be transferred through the flexible coupling to the shaft inside the main bearing and then from that rotation will be transferred to load bearing and through the load bearing it will be transferred to specimen now uh, w by 2 reaction forces will be there on the main bearing and w by 2 two forces will be there again in downward direction acting on the load bearing so whenever we have rotated this shaft or rotated the motor then the specimen will also rotate start to rotate but due to some amount of misalignment uh, there will be the um, fluctuation of that shaft and we have applied also w load uh, so that w by 2 load will be acting on the two load bearings due to rotation of the shaft that w by 2 load will be acting on the shaft just like a cyclic load that means it will be acted uh, the shaft will be moving in upward direction as well as in downward direction as shown in that corner figure so due to that motion of shaft whenever shaft is moving in upward direction then the downward surface of that shaft will be under compression and upward surface will be under tension whenever that shaft is moving in downward direction totally downward direction at that position the downward surface of that shaft will be under tension and upward surface of that shaft will be under compression so the surfaces two surfaces of that shaft will be continuously going under compression and tension compression and tension that means a cyclic load will be acted on that shaft just like a cycle shown in the left hand side here so due to that cyclic load after certain rotations that means after complete after completing certain cycles there will be breaking or there will be generation of crack and ultimately those crack will fail the specimen or break the specimen so in applications also whenever we are using that material in applications so at that time also there will be application of certain cyclic loads and specimen and we need to calculate at what cyclic loads and at what and after what rotations that material will get fail so that judgment is very much necessary for that purpose we are uh, doing the fatigue testing so after fatigue test actually we are uh, we are or we can draw the stress versus number of cycle diagram stress versus number of cycle diagram that means uh, suppose we have applied certain load that load will create a stress or it will be in the form of stress acting on the specimen so if that stress is up to yield strain suppose or ultimate tensile strain suppose ultimate tensile strain at that point that material will immediately fail without any rotation so at higher stress the number of cycles will be uh, very few that means uh, consider it as a zero as stress is decreased as stress is decreased the number of cycles will be increased so the graph generated for the ferrous material upward graph you can observe so that graph generated will be decreasing like this or with respect to maximum stress decreasing the number of cycles will go on increasing will go on increasing so 
after certain limit of that stress number of cycles will not change they will remain constant that upward graph you can observe at after certain stress the graph has remain horizontally straight only that means below that stress level there will be no change in the number of cycle that means number of cycles are remaining infinite so always we have to apply the stress that means cyclic load on the specimen or component under application below that limit so that the application will do the number of cycles infinite that failure will not occur so that limit or that point is called as a endurance limit or endurance point that limit is called as endurance limit so below that endurance limit below that maximum stress there will not be any chance of breaking of the specimen by fatigue so this is very much important in the design purpose uh, in machine design subject also the, you will study that endurance limit and this is for the cyclic loading exactly sinusoidal wave is there but if it is a random loading or if it is having different kind of lo uh, cyclic load acting on the specimen then for finding the endurance limit there may be uh, different methods are applied so those methods we will study in the machine design not necessary to hear uh, here you just remember the endurance limit sn curve is very important in case of fatigue test and we are finding this sn curve only in by using this uh, fatigue test so this is regarding fatigue and fatigue test thank you all